Hello everyone, how are you going? And welcome back to some more English word pronunciation differences, this time with a whole smattering of new English countries, and so let's see how everyone compares. Here we go, 10 English words. Each others? I've been to England and Canada. No different from what I've heard on TV, so I, I wouldn't say I was like shocked or anything. I've been to America yeah. once or twice, but yeah, it just sounded the same as what I would have expected from TV. Uh, I've been to England mm. before, and I do want to go to Canada and America. I feel like she added America as like a polite gesture. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to say Canada <laughs> and America. Probably. <laughs> I've only been to America. I actually do want to go to Canada and Scotland as well. I get the impression that Scotland is similar to UK, but then just sort of better in a lot of ways. <laughs> Hang on a second, obviously they're just going through all the countries they've been to, but I'm surprised that he hasn't been to Scotland, considering it's on the same single landmass. You know, even the two ladies that are from the USA and Canada have been to each other's countries. And let's say that you were from Texas and the USA, that is a much bigger and further distance than going from even London or Brighton up to Scotland. And I mean, at least she is holding down the fort for the UK, you know, like I said, that's a very easy one to do. It's a land border, you just drive down, or I guess you could fly down if you really wanted to, but either way, it's nice and close. In the same way, I mean, it is a bit of a further distance, but in the same way that most Australians have been to New Zealand and a lot of New Zealanders been to Australia, it's kind of the local group of neighbours, you just hang out together. And so yeah, to hear that he hasn't been to Scotland is honestly quite surprising to me. I just would have thought that'd be a nice easy one to tick off the list. I mean, I can only assume that he's properly crossed the channel and been into mainland Europe and maybe he's been the other way over into Ireland, but really, I'm still surprised. I get the impression that Scotland is similar to UK, but then just sort of better <laughs> in a lot of ways. Because uh, when people go on holiday to Scotland, they say a lot of good things. So I want to visit enough. Scotland as well. Hang on a second, they've used this word before. I mean, it was clearly with a different grouping, but I do remember it just giving me conniptions because I could not figure out how I would pronounce it. I think I would say dynasty. In the USA, we say dynasty. In Canada, we say dynasty. In Scotland, okay. we'd say dynasty. dynasty. In UK, yes. dynasty. Yes. In, Eng in England, in England, I should say yeah. England. Because now we're both UK. Now that certainly makes sense to me and also helps explain why I think that it would be dynasty in Australia because generally we do tend to lean more towards the UK than the American side. I mean there are some oddities where we have adopted American pronunciation but I think in this entire spread here we would go pretty much slap bang in the middle. I feel like some people in the US might also say dynasty just like if they're trying to sound academic. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> more <laughs> dynasty. <Pretty Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, come on now. What? What did she just say? There was such a jazz riff over the top of whatever she just said. I have no idea. Was it something like Americans say crayon horribly? I don't know. Oh, there's no way. You would have to be a lip reader to know what she said. I don't think they even put subtitles over it. Yeah, no, they did because no one can even tell what you said besides the editor, which could have muted the jazz riff. But they went, no, 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 they're just not going to be hearing this today. Anyway, let's just move on to crayon. Or I guess if you are Canadian, then you're going to be thinking of crayon pencils. In the US, we, well, I would say crayon. If I say it in like a more southern accent, then it'd be crayon. And some Americans might say it as like more one syllable, like crayon. I've heard friends say it like that. I can't do it. Like but crayon. <laughs> yeah. Crayon. In in Canada we would say crayon. And in UK, crayon. Uh, Scotland rather, we would say crayon. Um, crayon. in England we would say crayon. Your pronunciation sounds more like like the one syllable. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. It's what is going on here? I mean, I know that there is a decent amount of static in their audio and maybe they're trying to cover that up, but my goodness, I could not hear a thing. I mean, at least with this one, or I guess actually all of them, but in particular this word, the pronunciation was fairly straightforward or expected really from each country. The only one that was a little bit unexpected was from Scotland. It was really short and sharp, like they said, one syllable only. Whereas I'm fairly sure the other three all pronounced it with two syllables. I mean, obviously they tried to pronounce it with one and they kind of failed. They went, oh, we can't really do it, but I have heard of it and obviously the UK is just going to be nice and pure and clean. Anyway, here we go. Daniel Craig. In the US, I think everyone says Daniel Craig. In Canada, oh. we would say Daniel Craig. In oh. England, Daniel Craig. Yes. So the last name is a bit different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I guess that's the correct I, one. I guess that's the correct one. Obviously not from the US. Yeah. So. Right. Should I say that just before this, she asked me who Daniel Craig is? <laughs> I, I don't know who Daniel Craig is. What? What? <gasps> Oh. Shame, shame. <laughs> oh. Sorry. 
there we go the canadian is coming straight out of her just with the immediate sorry when you're just apologizing for something going oh i didn't know whatever it was i mean to be fair though i am surprised that she doesn't know who he is i feel as though james bond is a very influential international actor movie series whatever you want to call it and considering that daniel craig was the front runner for i think it was basically a decade i would have thought that she would know who it is but anyway i guess everyone just has people they don't know and i'm a bit sad that we didn't get to hear what scotland said i can only assume it would have been daniel craig as well because well the uk is going to pronounce it correctly australia also pronounces it like daniel craig not daniel craig i don't even know what they said but it's just wrong it hurts the ears foyer okay then this one in the us i've heard it said as both foyer and foyer but i personally would probably say foyer it has to be french in canada we would say foyer same in scotland we say foyer I, th wow. I think I personally would say foyer, but I'm not yeah. sure if that's how they say it in England. That's how I say it. Yeah. That's interesting because yeah, yeah, because yeah. In, in in Canada we French. see that as like a, a, a French word. Oh, really? There we go. Yeah, so I would I assume that like it would be similar. Mm. I think most Americans don't know this. It might just be me personally, but I I would see that and say foyer. We don't. I've never really used that word though. That's clearly a French word to me. Yeah. Interesting, yeah, right. interesting, yeah. interesting. Because whenever I've heard foyer, I feel as though it's just been people making fun of the word and trying to sound super upper class, but also mispronouncing it. But then to hear that it is actually a correct pronunciation, it certainly catches me off guard. I mean, is it of French origin? Is that where foyer comes into it? But then the English and everyone has just butchered into foyer. Either way, like I said, it would certainly make sense that the French influence is going to be coming onto Canada. Scotland is quite surprising though, because you kind of have to go through England to get to Scotland if you're coming from France but I guess that is what it is and then of course there is no surprises with the USA as there is no way they were ever going to be pronouncing it in a French style even though Quebec is right there and France is I guess just across the pond that's clearly a French word to me yeah, yeah okay. right yeah no we don't really use it um, so open floor plan houses and then there's like what? the more traditional houses actually I don't really know the real definition of this word but we would use me it neither. for like the hallway in the front of the house I yeah, think. yeah that would what? be the foyer what? Wait. What? My mind has just been blown. People use it in a housing sense? I have never heard foyer be used in the housing sense. I've only ever heard it being used in, I guess, maybe an event space, but absolutely just in hotels. That's what the foyer is. Yeah, here you go. Like it says, an entrance hall or other opening area in a building used by the public, especially in a hotel or theatre. Like I said, event space or especially a hotel. Nowhere does it mention, or actually, I guess it does, North American only, an entrance hall in a house or flat. No, North America. What? What are you doing? But we would use Me it neither. for like the hallway in the front of the house. I yeah, think. Just that would be the foyer. Oh. Maybe I do as well. We would usually use it to describe in like a big house, like a foyer, and then a small house would be a port. It's like the front area. Gross. Kill me now. Yeah. No. Maybe. You have to be, well, stupidly rich to have a foyer because that means it's not even about rich. It's about owning a building. And by building, I mean having at least like 10, 12, 40, 100 floors to it, not two. And so I would love to know where and when they butchered this word into it a whole way in a house because it's just wrong. Graham. In the US, I would say Graham. Graham. I think most people would say Graham. In Canada, oh. we'd say Graham. Oh, oh Graham. What? Graham. Graham. What? Graham. Uh, <laughs> uh, that makes sense. They use the H. Yeah. I think we'd say Graham with a Y almost Graham. instead of the H. Like Graham. Honestly, I think the UK sounded pretty similar there. It just comes down to how the individual pronounces the word. Yes, there's a little bit more of a Graham, a bit of a Scottish twang to it. And then, of course, the English are going to be super prim and proper about it. I mean, he mentioned a Y. I didn't hear a Y in there at all, but maybe other people do. And I'm not even going to get started on the North Americans because I swear it sounds like they said grim g-r-i-m oh grim you know you just change how you say it a bit and you go oh yeah no that's a bit grim oh no it's a bit grim and that's how they pronounce it to my ear and so i can understand why you'd be confused by the scottish but god what do they do to half the word yeah for me the pronunciation of both of them are the same, the same. Yeah. but they're different for you guys yeah, they're different, different. Totally very different. different. Mm -hmm. there's graham and graham like i know people <laughs> from my high school that were named graham and they just oh. pronounce it graham well, Graham Graham. of course they did because they're American and that's fine. They can pronounce their name however they want. I just still don't understand what they are doing with half the word. There is virtually no A's in it and get rid of the H entirely. Oh yeah, do you have Graham crackers? crackers. Oh. Is it spelled like yeah. Graham? Like with the <laughs> H. So much yeah. sense. No, we don't. <laughs> no, I'm not sure either. 
So you have greyhound crackers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have them at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> that also explains why when I first searched for graham crackers, I was going, what am I searching for? I searched graham crackers because that's what it is. And it's not grim. I thought it was originally grim. That's what I heard. But no, it is gram. G-R-A-M. Gram. Like 30 grams, 40 grams. And so now hearing them pronounce graham as gram, it just explains that whole situation. And no wonder the UK doesn't have it because they don't pronounce gram as gram. Semi-final, semi So this is one of those words that I go back and forth between. Okay. In the US, I think we would say semi-final or semi-final. I would definitely say semi-final. Yeah, I don't really watch football, but semi-final. Yes. I would also say semi-final. Yes. For me, like for semi-final, wow. it's always going to be semi, but other contexts, it might be different. Like semi... Detached. Oh, that's hard. I would still <laughs> use semi, like to say semi-detached as well, but I've heard people use both, even in Scotland. Yeah. I think most people in the South would say semi. See, that is what I was expecting from North America, just the semi instead of the semi, because all I've ever heard in that context was semi, like semi-trailer. And so it was interesting to hear that the context actually does matter, you know? Like they said, semi-finals are going to be pronounced as semi-finals, but then you talk about a prime mover and you go, oh, that's a semi. And so I'm wondering if that is because semi-final has been directly stolen from the UK and they generally use playoffs if they're talking about that kind of time period of sport or if it's just a completely different use altogether. Semi what? Detached house. I have no idea what you're talking like, about. <laughs> what is that? A trailer? <laughs> no, what? Oh, semi-detached. It means like when the house is one is connected and then the other one's not connected. You're connected yeah. to that because we have a lot yeah. of land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. You have 350 million people living in less land than 35 million people do just to the north of you. So I don't feel as though you can say you have a lot of land. I mean, I guess contextually you do have a lot of land, but you're also very populated within that lot of land. And you also can't sit there and say that the USA doesn't have cities. It's got heaps of them. And so there are plenty of people that are packed into quite tight circumstances. And then just as it gets further out of the CBD, then you start getting semi-detached and then you move into full houses eventually. And so I don't think you get to sit there all high and mighty and say we don't need that because we have a lot of land when there is a Canadian and then an Australian sitting right here as well. Ooh, interesting. In the US we say Van Gogh. If you say Van Gogh, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's true. It's true. In Canada we'd say Van Gogh. I'd okay. say Van Gogh as well, yeah. I'd also say Van Gogh. Ooh, okay, okay. So everyone's in agreement there. I guess generally if you're talking to someone, they would say Van Gogh in Australia. But then I have heard, and I don't know which one's correct, or actually if either of them correct, but I have also heard Van Gogh. And it isn't in the same way that she was talking about pronouncing the G at the end. You kind of just skip over the G and go straight to the H, if that makes sense. I'd say Van Gogh as well, yeah. I'd also say Van Gogh. They were going to say Van Gogh, but then they were getting <laughs> scared. <laughs> they got scared. <laughs> I, I sound like an idiot. I just keep quiet. <laughs> uh, no comment. Uh. <laughs> it just makes me question their yeah. entire education. Yeah. <laughs> what? Why? Oh. Um, in the US, we would say versatile, I think. In Canada, we'd say versatile. I'd say versatile as well. And I'd also say versatile. That is interesting that they all pretty much pronounce it exactly the same to the point where it almost cut through the accent entirely. It just became an English word instead of a, oh, you pronounce it with this accent. I mean, I guess there isn't particularly a hard A sound or any hard letter in there that you can really start to get the difference between the accents, but it's still surprising to me that they all pronounce it the same, you know? In Australia, you would say, oh, that's versatile, not that's versatile. I mean, I guess if you were really trying to pronounce every single syllable, then you would say, oh, that is versatile. But really, most people are going to be saying, oh, yeah, that's pretty versatile. I've, I've, I've heard it. it but. I can imagine it being a thing but I've not heard it is actually. That, I think Wait, are they talking back to me? Is that what that entire thing was? Because there is no way they're going from I call it versatile to I've heard it makes any contextual sense. So I can only assume someone said, oh, have you heard versatile before? And they went, oh, I've heard it. But it was just such a weird thing to go, oh, I pronounce it like this. And they go, oh, I've heard that before. Ah, of course. In the US, we would say sauce and source. In Canada, mm. we'd say sauce and source. Uh, okay. Sauce. Source, yeah. I think I would just say source and source, <laughs> to be honest. I yeah. feel like your pronunciation has more of that like American O sound on yeah. source. Mm -hmm. source. I try to enunciate my words clearly since I've lived abroad. Right. I think if Fair anything, enough. it would be even harder maybe. Some people would say like source. 
Now I'm just getting a bit thrown off as to what Australia would say. I mean, I guess if I put it in a sentence, it's probably going to be easier. So if you had tomato sauce on a sandwich, that would be the first one. But then if you were doing the second one, you would go, yeah, can I have the sauce for that being a website or anything like that? So I guess we do pronounce it in the same way that the English do. I mean, maybe some people would pronounce sauce. No, I don't even know how you would pronounce S-O-U-R-C-E any differently. So yeah, no, impossible for me. Yeah, and listening to it again, it definitely has to have an American accent in order to pull off the two differentials because if you say it like an Australian you say it like the second one but as soon as you get that American A sound in there then you can pronounce the first one. We definitely gotta pronounce the R in Scotland. We don't pronounce the R obviously so when we say the sauce. second source it just sounds sauce. the same as the first source. I, so. I try to say it like in my mom's accent. Sauce. Sauce and source. Okay. Sauce. <laughs> so American to me. Sauce. Sauce. Yeah makes sense. Oh, okay. In the past, I would say asthma. just, I think naturally I would say asthma. Oh, that's US, gross. But I actually have asthma and I got tired asthma. of people asking what it means <laughs> or like what I'm talking about. So now I say like asthma. What? <laughs> I try to like really enunciate <laughs> the TH. I think I would just, in Canada, we would just say asthma. Yeah. Was, was that the same as yours? Or no. I mean, yeah, that was a better way of Oh, okay. Saying. Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, in Scotland, asthma. Yeah. A little bit of the TH in there. Yes. I would say asthma. Yeah, asthma, it's hard even for me to pronounce, yeah. but yeah, I think kind of we, we do pronounce the, the TH, actually. Yeah, that is a very tricky word to correctly phonetically pronounce. So you're going asthma is what you'd kind of be doing there, but in Australia, you just say you've got asthma. Completely skip the TH sound. Nah, that is too hard. Not even going to bother to attempt it. Just go ASMA or a -double -S -M -A, something like that. Just get it done. Especially for people that actually have asthma, because I feel as though most of the time people are talking about it, if they have it, is because they need a puffer for it. And so they might be a little bit short of breath to go, Athema. This is just too long for them. They'll die before they can even get the word out. So I'm honestly surprised that she said, oh, I got tired of people asking what it means because she wasn't pronouncing it correctly and it wasn't long enough. It was already way too long. Just because something is native English doesn't make it better. Right. Um, so. And so there are some certain ways that uh, non-native speakers speak English that I have adopted because mm -hmm. it's just right. better. And yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's true. Oh, like it's asthma. Evolving. <laughs> Are they calling Australians non-English speakers? I mean, I guess fair point because we just make up our own words half the time, but at the same time, I feel as though there's a little bit of English in there, maybe half the sentence. But hey, like they just said, it is so interesting to hear all of these different countries just pronounce the same words because it's all one language, but it can just have so many minor or major differences in it that people go, oh wow, I didn't even know that was the same word sometimes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I would think that English would be the only one to really do this because most other languages are just going to be centered to one country. I mean, I guess maybe some Spanish is going to be filtered around so you've got Portuguese but that's an entirely different language it's just similar and so even though I have now checked out a few of these English pronunciation videos it just never ceases to amaze me just the variety and just how every single country pronounces their own thing and really just helps to explain why some people when they travel they just really can't get their ear or just tuned to what they're even hearing for goodness sake like I was saying when I was looking for graham crackers I searched graham crackers because that's all I'd ever heard and so when you have a combination like this with the two pairings both in North America and the UK you really start to see how every Everyone's just diverged from the same parent language. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to do the YouTube algorithm things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done. Also, make sure to go check out the original video down in the description below. Or hey, maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.